The White Sox opening day starter Garrett Crochet absolutely shoved in his first MLB start. The beauty of a tool like Stuff Plus is that we don't necessarily need to wait four or five starts for us to have some idea of how we think Crochet will perform going forward. Underlying traits on pitches are pretty powerful in terms of their predictiveness in small samples. So let's do a deep dive on Crochet and we're gonna start with his pitch mix. He's a four pitch guy, a carry fastball, sweeper slider, a cutter and a changeup. Stuff Plus has him with about an average forcing fastball, an above average cutter, and a plus plus slider with a below average changeup. The average for Stuff Plus is about 100 with a standard deviation, somewhere around 18 or so, depending on the pitch type. So something that's 100 is average, whereas something that's a 118 would be a plus pitch. We'll get into more of why his pitch is grayed out like this when we jump through his shapes, but I do want to start first with his locations. To left-handed hitters, he's throwing a ton of four-seam and slider. He doesn't really face a lot of left-handed hitters because he has a really strong advantage there. Fastballs are more middle of the plate. Sliders run off that fastball line down away. I'm showing you 2023 locations alongside 2024 here just because our 2024 sample is small and it just takes some time for things like location to stabilize or become predictive of what we're going to see, not just what we have seen. To right-handed hitters is where Crochet starts to break out the new cutter that he has this year and his changeup. In that first start of his, his forcing fastball sat squarely up and inside to right-handed hitters, which I think might be part of a targeting change for him compared to last season where he's a bit more middle, kind of all over the place as you could see in this 2023 plot. His slider works down and inside to righties, pretty standard for lefty sweepers to right-handed hitters. We're looking at a pretty small sample on the cutter and changeup in terms of usage, but that cutter is likely middle of the plate to inside and his changeup is gonna be down away. One thing I do wanna point out about the fastball, I mentioned a targeting change there, and I think this is a pretty interesting targeting strategy for a guy like Martin Maldonado to kind of linger over the plate Seems like he flashes his glove down, and then we see the result on paper for crochets, a lot of fastballs up and inside to righties. Now this could be playing into his natural miss. Maybe he misses up with his fastball, so by setting up here as Maldonado, you expect the pitch to kind of end up over here. But I wonder whether there's a targeting strategy that's maybe more middle down, or potentially just move Maldonado to the inner third of the plate a bit more and that would actually let Crochet get up and inside to right-handed hitters more consistently. We did see some arm side misses for him in this outing. Maybe that's just natural variance in his command, or maybe it doesn't matter at all, and Crochet is just looking at, say, the right side of Maldonado's chest here, and that's why you don't really see too loud of a glove target or anything going on with Maldonado. Maybe Crochet's eyes are just in a different spot, and this is what is gonna be most effective for him to get that ball up and inside to righties. Now from locations, let's move on to the shape of his pitches. His four seam had some variance yesterday. As you can see in this plot, we have some things that are lingering outside where we think that concentration of his average shape is, and that's gonna pull down the overall grade slightly because it's underselling how much arm side movement this pitch is getting. So the seven inches of arm side movement he gets on average is probably more like 10 inches. He's also extending near seven feet on average, which is one of those subtle things that I think will help the pitch play up. Seven feet of extension is somewhere around the 90th percentile in Major League Baseball, which is really strong. Only 10% of pitchers in MLB are extending down the mound further than him. The shape of his fastball comps well to what D.L. Hall of the Brewers throws. It's a bit like 2023 Tariq Skubal as well. I'll emphasize 2023 there because we have seen that Skubal's vertical break and velocity have increased a bit in his first start of 2024. Those two guys I think are pretty fair comps for Crochet's forcing. Crochet's cutter is a nasty pitch. It's above 93 miles per hour on average, eight inches of vertical break, two inches glove side movement. The average cutter in Major League Baseball last year was 89 miles per hour with eight inches of vertical break and one to two inches of glove side movement. So pretty spot on. You can see the main differentiator with Crochet's cutter is the velocity of the pitch. This comps really well to Jose Alvarado's cutter of the Phillies, who also has a pretty nasty cutter. One of the main reasons I think this grades out well is that Crochet throws it hard. Most cutters are not this hard, and that's a byproduct of the fact that most guys don't throw as hard as Crochet, but also guys who throw their cutter harder start to just turn it into a forcing fastball. If you think of cutters, they're slightly offset grips generally in terms of how they're released. The most efficient way to apply velocity to a ball is to get behind it, right? To be behind the fastball, apply the most force, create the most velocity. So you see the counter there. It's like if you're throwing a cutter here and you try to throw it harder, what might end up happening is you just get behind the ball more and it becomes more like 
your fastball. So the key thing with Crochet's cutter is that he's throwing at 93, but he's able to differentiate the movement somehow enough such that it's still dropping a good amount, as you see right around the average for a major league cutter. His slider is a big sweeper that's really hard, 84 miles per hour with 15 inches of sweep is filthy. That's three miles per hour harder than the average left-handed sweeper with about the same amount of sweep. As something is harder, it generally shortens up in movement. So again, Crochet grades out incredibly well here because he's able to maintain a big amount of sweep at a velocity well above average for that pitch type. It comes pretty nicely to what Justin Steele throws on the north side of Chicago. Crochet just has over seven feet of extension, where Steele doesn't really have that extension, but Steele's fastball is a bit more unique. Crochet's changeup, we didn't see a lot in his first outing, but I do think he may have made a tweak to this pitch compared to last season. You can see the shape difference here on our pitch plot. Look at where his changeup was last year and where it is this year. It's lowered down into the left on our plot ever so slightly. Again, we're talking small sample here, but in general, it seemed to me that he was killing more spin, it's dropping more, that's why the vertical break number is lower and it is lower on our plot. It's resisting the force of gravity less and it's also running arm side a bit more. I think there could have been some kind of grip tweak here, but we'll have to keep an eye on the offering to get more of a sample. Overall, we often see pitchers come out early in the season and post really strong stuff scores. Potentially the velocity's up because those first couple of innings of opening day, adrenaline going, and then we'll see guys kind of even plateau back out. I think one of the key things with Crochet is that even if he evens out and loses some of these stuff gains, so to speak, the overall byproduct of what he's doing is still going to be pretty positive. Say the slider comes down in velocity slightly, or even the fastball comes down slightly. I still think they're going to be at least average or better pitches. With that forcing fastball specifically, we talked about how those straggler pitches, so to speak, are gonna pull down the overall grade of the offering. So although it's kind of a round average, I think that if you were to take away those stragglers and be more consistent in the shape of that offering specifically, we might actually see an increase in the four seam stuff, which would be really strong. Overall, I see him as having three average two plus pitches, and this changeup's a bit of, uh, of a mystery to me, so to speak. So I'm curious to see how that pitch develops going forward. I don't think it's super important given he has the cutter. This is a average or better fastball and a plus plus slider. It's a really nasty combination. So how did we miss this potential breakout in spring training? Well, first he's on the White Sox, but second, I saw tweets like this one from a local reporter in Chicago, Bruce Levine, that said Crochet would be kind of slow rolled, right? A multi-inning reliever, opener kind of style pitcher. And that's no offense to Bruce. I've worked with Bruce. I've done segments with him. He's awesome. He's the man. He's one of my favorite people to talk ball with. This is just the first tweet I found. So I get to body bag Bruce here for no reason at all. And the idea that he was being slow rolled made sense. Crochet was a reliever all of last season. He didn't really have great command and he hadn't started a game since college where even there he only started 12 games in his first two seasons at Tennessee. So for him to go out and shove through six innings, throw 80 plus pitches was surprising. From a velocity and pitch spec standpoint, he basically put up the numbers that were him as a reliever over this six inning sample, which is generally not what you expect. If every reliever could just do that, they would be a starting pitcher. So where do we go from here? Well, I do think command is the question that we're gonna need some more time to determine the answer to. Yeah, I get he was really good in his first outing. No, that's probably not enough for us to believe it will continue in full. Fangraphs had his location plus at above average, which was, again, really surprising for a guy who was a reliever. It looked good the other day. It hasn't really looked great in the past, and therefore, I think we have to remain slightly skeptical that the command sticks. But there are positive signs here for sure. I think even if his command wavers and comes down to average or slightly below, he's got good enough stuff, and he held it over five innings plus that he's probably gonna be productive regardless of where that command falls. And again, he flashed this good of command where I don't really even expect it to bottom out. Again, if we're looking at slight regression here on his command and even on his stuff, I still think this is at least an average arm in the majors. If on the other hand, the command that he flashed in this outing tends to stick more than we expect it to regress, then what I think we're looking at is one of the breakout starting pitchers of 2024 so far. Again, we're early, I totally get that, but the underlying stuff here is fantastic. He's a lefty too, which I think is gonna create some deception and also just throw off hitters. I love how he's pitching up and into right-handed hitters with the forcing fastball. It's gonna be really important to neutralizing the opposite handedness, which he's gonna face a ton. He has a star coming up against the Braves, which is absolutely terrifying. I may drop a comment down here in this video after I watch the outing and we'll see how he does. That is a really tough matchup. So even if he gets through five and slightly struggles there, I still will be pretty encouraged. He's facing some of the best 
right-handed hitters in baseball and Acuna and Austin Riley. So Garrett Crochet, interesting early candidate for one of the breakout starting pitchers of this season. Let me know if you agree in the comments and as always, thank you for watching.